Yes, 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 PC, if you know you are PC, the trust you are my hand. All the pieces, please come and let me know. PC, you will back on the pieces. So we are PC, I'm going to let me trust you. Okay. So, why you know? Where you see your side door? Why you know? Bang, bang. But I'm going to let me know what you're going to do. I'm going to let me know what you're going to do.
Many countries have come to Ghana to learn our decentralization program and policies. And they have come to learn because it went beyond mere constitutional provisions to us creating decentralized institutions of government, of municipal district assemblies. The developments that have occurred as a result of the district assembly common fund can only be to the credit of the NDC. So, Professor Dunfer, come again. So, the professor, he must come again. It was not only the 1992 Constitution of Article 252, even before it, there was a PNDC Law 207. That is credit to the PNDC and the NDC. In one breath, we shouldn't take credit for what Rollins did. In another breath, we must pay for the sins of what they say they don't accept. Hey, Zoom! So, to avoid a state capture, the MPP is determined to capture the state of Ghana as if it is their body fighting and their own. The only person who can stop this capture, welcome him, the only person who can stop this capture, a state capture, rescue the country, develop the country, save the economy of the country, for 2024 and I expect that all the regions will also do their version of this work. It shows that NDC we are healthy, we are ready for the campaign of 2024. Even the rain has not been able to stop you. All of you who have walked today from the starting point to here have done six kilometers of walking and that should put you in good health and prepare you for the job that we have ahead. We're going to go from door to door, from house to house, from market to market, taxi rank to taxi rank, trotro station, kitchen, chop bar, everywhere, Ghanaian are. We're going to go there and send the message of NEC. It's a long time since I saw King Ayusuba. It's a long time since I heard his, uh, his song. But his message is very instructive. My father, the way you do, it is not fine. The way you do, it is not fine. Every day and every night, I suffer money matter. The way you do, it is not fine. I do to do the way you do, it is not fine. The way you do it is not fine. 
matter where you do, it is not fine. You make Ghanaians suffer money matter every day, every night. But that's the beauty of democracy. It affords us every four years the opportunity to make a change. And that opportunity comes on 7 December 2024. I just want to say that when you have a sickness, the first step towards getting a cure is to diagnose the sickness and know that you are sick. Unfortunately for this group of people in leadership, the MPP, they don't even recognize that Ghana is sick. For somebody to say that there is no hunger, there hasn't been hunger since Akukwado came into government, it means because he's eating peche and the rest of us are eating pocho. <laughs> he doesn't know that there is hunger in Ghana. But everything has a time. Every dog has its day. And the MPP's day is up on 7 December 2024. I know that Dumwa and Teshi have fishing communities. And all of them are complaining. The way pre-mix was organized in our time. Bonnie, Professor Samuel, your uh, 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 presidents hear me. They hear Sean Affair, they must have pre-mix standing. If they land in beach committees, they have pre-mix there at the Hame. I am a chairman of the Prime Minister. 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 Uh, when we went to our Yawasu East Wagong and Adenta. The first is the National Apprenticeship Scheme. As I've said before, not all our children are imbued with the same mental ability. You can have the same children sitting in the same class. When the teacher che teaches, one is able to catch it immediately. And so we think that he's smart, he's knowledgeable, he's intelligent. There's another one who is slow to learn. And so we might do an exam, the sharp one will continue to university and all that. But it doesn't mean that the one who does not catch it very quickly does not have the talent that God gave him. Take those two, the one you say is slow and the one who is smart. Put them in an environment where they have to use their hands. And you find that that other one is better able and more skillful than the one who gets A in class. So all our children have a talent that God gave them. So it cannot be that we give free education to one group all the way to university, and yet when the others fall out, they are left to their own fate. Not all of them can go into the TVET centers. And so our strategy would be to introduce the National Apprenticeship Program, so that for those who are not able to continue into tertiary education, they'll be able to go into an apprenticeship and learn a skill with their hands so that they can also find work. And if you have to learn a skill under the National Apprenticeship Program, it will help you to be able to establish something for yourself and be able to earn an income. And I said that even if your intention is to go outside the country, if you have a skill, it is an advantage for you. Because if you are a mason, you are, it's easier to find work as a mason. If you are a carpenter, it's easier to find work. If you are a welder, it's easier to find work. So when we introduce the National Apprenticeship Scheme, I expect that all our young people who are idle and not doing anything, they are not in education, they are not in employment, at least they'll come into training so they're able to uh, learn a skill under the National Apprenticeship Program. The second one is our women. Our women are a major driver of this economy. If it comes to trade and commerce, our women dominate that sector. And most of the time, all they need is just a little credit 
thousand Ghana cities to be able to use as capital to be able to do their uh, uh, business. And yet there's no helper. The traditional banks won't give them support. And that's why NDC says when we come into office, we're going to create the National Women's Bank. The bank will have outlets in the major markets and everywhere that women have their small and medium enterprises. So that the little credits that they need, the 500, the 1,000, the 2,000, the 5,000, that bank will lend it to the women and as they pay it will be a revolving fund and will be given to other women and they will improve their circumstances. Because women form the majority of our population. The population census has continuously shown that women are 51% of our population, more than the men. And so we're going to give this focus so that they can be able to resolve their issues. 24 hour economy, number three. in crisis we cannot turn the fortunes of this country round as fast enough if we continue to work only from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and that is the point I'm making if we continue to work only from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. it will take us decades to turn this economy around and so we need to be running not walking and our opponents say, oh, but some people are doing it already. Fine, some people are doing it already. But there is no policy that incentivizes people to do it. That's all I'm talking about. And so we are going to introduce the policy that gives incentives for more business people and manufacturers to adopt the 24-hour economic policy. Because if we incentivize them and they add on additional shifts, even if it's only one shift, if it's even only one additional shift, that will create additional employment for young people. Our unemployment rate is unacceptable. It was just about 8% in 2016. Today it's 14.7%. And so we have to deal with the unemployment situation. All those artificial job creation uh, uh, policies have not worked. You recruited young people for national uh, the NAPCO program. Up to today, you haven't even paid them their arrears. Baumia and Anna Kufado, I'm speaking on behalf of the NAPCO trainees. We beg you, they're on their knees. Pay them what is due them. And so finally, about the election and our consequences. All of us who are capable must volunteer to train as party agents. So who, wherever you are, if you are an accountant, you are a banker, whatever profession you have, if you are capable, please volunteer. We have to train you. However intelligent you are, if you are not trained in the electoral process, you will not be able to police the poll for us. So if you submit your names, it will be submitted to the elections directorate. We will know the polling station where you vote. So on that day, you are not just going to vote and go back home. You are going to vote and you are going to sit there and protect the ballot for the NDC and the people of Ghana.